This is going to be called, Who Sees You When You're Sinning? You think that you're committing all these secret sins alone and nobody can see you but you yourself. But somebody somewhere sees you and is watching you. And number one, who sees you sinning? The spirit world sees you sin. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Many believe that Satan doesn't tempt them personally. And they may say he is the only he, he's only working on the new Bible committees or in Hollywood or in the government in the secret societies. But first Peter five eight calls him your adversary. It says, because your adversary, the devil, uh, that's personal. He is personally attacking every Christian. Sure, he isn't everywhere at once, and he doesn't have to be. He sees you when you're sinning. The devil sees you sinning. When you consider the spiritual world, there is no secret sin. If you're watching pornography and defiling yourself, then you have an audience have you been watching pornography at home at night when your family is asleep? You're not alone. Have you been fornicating with that woman at work? You're not alone during that adultery. There is a spirit world that sees you sinning. Something or someone sees you. And there is a strong devilish influence behind sexual sin. And when you're committing this sexual sin, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a evil spirit sitting right next to you in the bed. Think about that when you're home alone at night doing what you think you're doing by yourself. But what if this spiritual realm was made clear to you when you were defiling yourself? What do you think you would see? In Ezekiel 8.12, God shows Ezekiel the dirty things that the house of Israel do in the dark, and he showed him the pictures that were on the wall. But today it is moving pictures. Try Trying to hide your sin in the dark will not work. Because remember who the power of darkness is. Acts twenty six eighteen says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. So what spirit is, is present when you have thoughts of murder and harming others? What spirit is behind the video games that are bloody and violent? Who sees you playing those bloody, violent video games? What spirit is behind making you addicted to those kind of things? First Samuel nineteen nine and 10 says, And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand, and Saul sought to smite David, even to the wall with the javelin. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall. And David fled and escaped that night. So you see how the evil spirit was on Saul and caused him to do something violent. When you play those wicked video games, that violent spirit gets on you. Maybe you're antisocial. And you think you're alone and no one sees what you're doing in your house as you play those bloody, gory, violent games. But are you really alone? Your flesh wants to play those games, but is there something fueling the flesh and encouraging you to sin? Who puts the thoughts of, of murder into the minds of the writers? Who influences all these writers to make these horrible books like R.L. Stein made all those horrible goosebumps books that children are reading even today, putting horror in their mind. Who puts the thoughts in Wes Craven's mind and Stephen King's mind? I know it's their flesh, but there's something fueling them to keep them going. Who influences the whore to dress in a way to catch your eye so that you'll look at her in lust? And who's present when you have eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin? 
Who triggers the lustful and violent fantasies in your brain? Jude one eight says, Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. The unclean spirits can help fuel the flesh and those desires, and they can cause certain sinful behavior through placing thoughts and daydreams in your mind. They can put a wicked woman in front of you to make you want to sin. And some people hear voices that tell them to do harmful things to others. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the spirit world that sees you while you're sinning. Are you opening up yourself to unclean spirits through your sin? Have you ever thought about this? The stuff that you're doing by yourself may be crossing a line into something very dark and more than just your flesh. In Zechariah 13.2, God talks about how he will cast the unclean spirits out of the land. And they aren't cast out yet. We still have to worry about the unclean spirits. Some people don't think that they are working today like they did when Jesus was here. And you read all the stories about the people getting devil possessed. But clearly they're still here. James three fourteen through 16 says, But if you, if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wind, wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. In every church where envy and strife is present, there are devils at work. It's devilish, as the verse said. Even if other people don't know what you're thinking, devils can see the sin of envy all over your face. And the devils are sometimes in the pulpits. In 1 Kings twenty two twenty three, it says, Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And when a preacher teaches a damnable heresy, devils are present. But is it just the devils who see you sinning in the spiritual world or also the angels? In Genesis 19, the angels were on their way to Lot's house. And who knows what they saw in the alleys and in the streets. The pride parades and the open sodomy and perversion. The angels see everything that you're doing. If there's devils present around you. There's most likely angels present there too. But you're not alone. There's a spiritual world. There's that spiritual ram. And they see what you're doing. But not only this. Technology. This is a scary thing. Technology. And this can be linked with unclean spirits as well. The technology. Have you ever thought about this? As you're sinning. And you think that no one is looking. Maybe someone is looking that you aren't aware of. Recently, hackers have been hacking into baby monitors even, looking at someone else's baby and even scaring the baby and talking to them. Technology can be very useful. I'm using it right now. But also, it can invite someone or something into your home unaware. It is, a fright it is frightening that another person from another state or even another country could enter into your child's room through a baby monitor. What about your webcam on your laptop? This can be hacked into and they can see right into your room and look you right in the face. What if they did this when you were sinning? Who is seeing you sinning? Who is seeing you talk to that girl on the internet that you're not married to? What if someone wanted to blackmail you, entered your home through your webcam? If you're a Christian, then they could easily blackmail you by threatening to ruin your testimony ruining how the public sees you if you're some high up person and this would be detrimental to your career maybe they recorded you in your secret sin your secret sin getting out into the public wouldn't just hurt you and your testimony but also the spiritual life of others romans fourteen seven says for none of us liveth to himself and no man dieth to himself what you do affects other people but what about the smart TV in your living room? There is no doubt it is tracking your viewing habits for advertisements. Uh, YouTube tracks what you watch and gives you recommended 
videos of after you've watched something? Are you watching something inappropriate? What about the smart TVs with voice recognition? They hear what you say, and private information can be stored in a database somewhere. Are you really alone while you're sinning? They have the facial recognition scanners on things now. Uh, what about your viewing history on YouTube? As I said, YouTube tracks your viewing history and the videos you view, causing recommendation videos to show up on the home screen. What about your Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest and your browser history? All that stuff is saved somewhere. Somewhere someone can access what you have been viewing. You're never really alone. If in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2, the devil is called the prince of the power of the air. Jesus said he saw Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So you have air waves and electricity. And I think there is a connection between Satan and electricity. You know Satan is the accuser of the brethren. If Satan has technology in every Christian's home that can spy on him, he doesn't need to be everywhere at once. He could very well use it as blackmail against you to accuse you because he is the accuser of the brethren. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Danny Castle recently mentioned how he thought it was interesting how 2 Corinthians 2.11 talks about being ignorant of his devices. And that is what everyone is consumed with today is devices, iPhones, iPads, Apple Watches, Kindle Fires, Smart TVs. I'm not saying you can't use these things for good sometimes, but a lot of times they're used for evil and the devil is getting a hold of people through these devices. In Judges 6, 25 and 26, it says, And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, and even the second young bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock in the ordered place, and take the second bullock, and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. So you see how the Lord has Gideon destroy his father's altar to Baal and then use it for an altar to God. So you can take something that's bad and use it for something good. David took Goliath's sword and cut his head off. You can take what the enemy is using and use it for good. Do you realize that everywhere you go, though, there are security cameras, and they can solve whole murder cases by taking the CCTV footage from businesses and putting them together to form an entire story of the crime scene. They captured surveillance footage of a man preparing for a murder in his hotel room, going to a hardware store to buy duct tape and a shovel, and then at Walmart buying other supplies to cover up the murder. It is easy for them to track your every move. They can know more personal information about you than your own family. If someone sees you sinning. It is no secret. Technology can see you sinning. And sometimes unclean spirits can get in technology. Have you ever heard of the ghost in the machine? A lot of this transhumanism stuff, I believe, is hooked up with unclean spirits. It's the ghost in the machines. But not only technology sees you sinning, but your kids see you sinning. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. If your kids continuously see you sinning every day, they're going to commit the same sins that they're watching you commit. If you're watching filthy movies on TV, then they will watch filthy movies on TV. Taking them to church is not enough. You need to have them watching the right thing at home, seeing you do the right thing at home. You need to teach them at home. As that verse said, no man liveth to himself, no man dieth to himself. Your sins affect other people. They affect your kids. Evil communication corrupts good manners, as the Bible says, and it's a shame if you are that evil communication. 
It's a shame that kids will learn wicked things from their parents and then go to school and then infect the other kids with it. I learned a lot of wicked things from the kids at school. And where did they learn it? They learned it from their parents or from the entertainment that their parents were allowing them to watch. Your son sees you sinning. And his idea of his heavenly father has a lot to do with how he sees his earthly father. Ephesians 6, 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I've known friends growing up that their dads let them watch pornography, listen to wicked music, watch wicked movies, put uh, beer bottles to them, let them smoke pot, and your kids see you put the alcohol in the refrigerator. They see you listen to music you're not supposed to be listening to. If you're a grown man or woman, then why are you still listening to wicked music? Why are you still doing all these childish things? Have you not grown up yet? 1 Corinthians 13.11 says, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. It's a scary thought that these kids you see today are going to be someone's grandparents someday. But your kids see you acting like a child. If you're a father with kids, why are you still driving through the Walmart parking lot listening to rap music with the bass turned all the way up? Why are you still playing video games in your bedroom while your kids are off doing only God knows what they're doing? But not only do your kids see you sinning, lost people see you sinning. Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. There are lost people watching you when you don't think anybody's watching you. You could be way across the room or across the plant and uh, get angry and throw something in a fit or say a cuss word, and a lost person sees you. And we are supposed to try and win souls as in Proverbs 11.30 it says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. We're supposed to try to be a good witness, and it is kind of hard to do that when the lost world thinks you act just like they act. You can ruin your testimony with the lost men at work by losing your temper, laughing and telling dirty jokes, complaining and whining, being lazy on the job, flirting with women at work you aren't married to, I've heard lost men talk about Christian men and say that guy is a married pastor and he's flirting with this girl at work all day or all night. And you talk about bringing shame to the name of Christians. You know how bad that looks if you're a, the pastor of a church and you're married but yet you're flirting with a girl in front of all these other men at work? And I've seen this with my own eyes about how bad it looks. And I see how the lost people view Christians after seeing things like that. Lost people see you sinning. When you do it in secret even or when you do it out in the open. But Titus 2, 6 through 8 says, Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. In all things showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine showing uncorruptness. Gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. When you go into work, your life should make others around you want to be better, not worse. There are some Christians who go to work and people won't even cuss around them because they're, sh they're ashamed. Let them see you reading the Bible instead of hearing you gossip about your co-workers in the break room. It's a shame that Christians will go to work or wherever else and sit and gossip and talk about people just like the lost world does. You don't even see that as a sin anymore. But the lost people see that as a sin and they see you sin. And lastly, God sees you sinning and He is keeping record. You know how good God is at record keeping? Look at the book of Numbers. Look at the book of First Chronicles. How does he remember all that stuff? How does he remember who beget who? 
God knows everything you have done from the moment you were born and sees all the stuff you haven't until the day you die. He sees all that stuff that you haven't even done yet. Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. He sees all the evil stuff that's going on, so no wonder he's angry. Ecclesiastes 12.14 says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God sees everything you do, saved or lost. He sees you. Have you ever heard the phrase, you can't get anything by him? But that phrase is an understatement for God. You can't get anything by him because he already saw you do it before you did it. Genesis 6, 5 says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. After God has seen you sin, you can't pay him off with money to get rid of the sin. You can't delete it like an email or text message. You can't clear it like a recent call you shouldn't have made. You can't delete it like your browser history. You can't bury it. The only thing you can do is get saved and get your sin under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or if you're already saved, confess your sin. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, this hol holiness woman said, you can't just ask God for forgiveness every night before you go to bed and expect everything to be okay. But actually, that's exactly what you have to do. If you're honest at all, then you know you sin habitually every day in some form or fashion. You are a sinful creature with sinful flesh. And even though you're not committing adultery and crime, uh, you still have wicked thoughts, wicked imaginations, wicked desires. You get jealous, you gossip, you get full of pride, you commit sins of omission. You know you didn't do everything you were supposed to do every day this week. There's things that you need to confess. Daniel 2.22 says, He revealeth the deep and secret things. God knows the deep and secret things that are out there. Psalms 90 and verse 8 says, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins and light of thy countenance. Luke eight seventeen says, For nothing is secret that should not be made manifest, neither anything hid that, sh that it shall not be made known and come abroad. Psalms nineteen twelve says, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Secrets, for the most part, aren't good, and that is why they say dirty little secrets. The world knows they are dirty. God sees the secret societies and the things they do behind closed doors with the pedophilia and the murdering and the robbing people because the love of money is the root of all evil. He sees the blackmail. Psalm 64, 2 says, Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Maybe everyone will be able to see what the lost man did when he gets to the great white throne judgment. But even if everyone can't see it, God still has a record of it and has it on tape. It's in his file cabinet with your name on it. And for Christians at the judgment seat of Christ, he sees your lack of service. And what you should do is, Whatever you do by yourself, keep in mind you're never alone and somebody somewhere is always watching.